So you manage a network for a living and someone calls you one day and says, hey, I can't reach IP address x that x that x that x. Can you help me? What do you do? I'm going to show you how to configure and utilize my favorite network troubleshooting tool, NetFlow. Stick around. So why do I love NetFlow? NetFlow allows me to see traffic. That's huge. Uh, when somebody calls me with a connectivity issue, seeing routes to the source and destination, sure, that's a great first step. My router knows how to get to both source and destination. Sweet. But uh, there are times when you have routing in place and for a number of reasons that traffic isn't traversing uh, said router. So I love NetFlow because it allows you to see the traffic either flowing or not flowing through the router. So let's take a look. Let's start at what a flow is. A Cisco standard NetFlow version five defines flow as a unidirectional sequence of packets that all share seven values, which you define a unique key for the flow. Um, what I'm most concerned about is source destination protocol. Um, there's a bunch of other wonderful stuff in here, but that's what a flow is. Sweet. So what is NetFlow? I show you. NetFlow is a feature that was introduced on Cisco routers around 1996 that provides the ability to collect IP network traffic as it enters or exits the interface. That is sweet. Uh, once this is configured, you will be able to see the source IP, destination IP, and protocol as it traverses an interface. And I can validate that that traffic has indeed traversed my transit network and gone elsewhere. Uh, there could be, for instance, a firewall uh, in the path after my router that I do not manage and trying to segment, um, you know, and isolate where the connectivity issue could be. Um, NetFlow is a wonderful tool that I've used so many times. It's my favorite um, to say, hey, I have the route. I can ping you. Uh, I see the traffic, the flow traversed my router and left on an interface. I do not manage the other end. Let's get that team involved. Um, so what you see here in the Eve topology, um, just two end devices, could be anything. This could be a client trying to reach an application. Um, this could just be two buddies trying to send each other cat pictures. I don't know. Um, but basic topology in Eve, two end devices and two routers. Uh, right now there is no routing configured. Um, I did put IPs on these two end devices. So this guy has 10.20.30.40 configured. Uh, he's in the subnet 10.20.30.0 slash 24. And on the other end of this cable, uh, the dot one is on this router. So he can reach him. He can reach him just locally. And uh, the same over here, 10.20.50.40 on this end device. He's in that 50.0 slash 24 subnet and dot one in the 50.0 subnet is right here. So they can reach each other. And these two can also reach each other. So you got 10.20.30.0 on the left, 10.20.40.0 in the middle. And that 20.50.0 on the right. I'm trying to make it easy for myself. Um, if we look at the routing table, uh, we'll see that all CSR3 knows is it's directly connected networks 10.20.30, which is over here, and 10.20.40, which is over here. He will not have a route to the 10.20.50. So that's the end host, and he cannot reach him. So, what we need to do first for this lab, um, I thought it'd be helpful to show you just how to get basic um, layer three connectivity and reachability up with um, BGP. Uh, very minimal, easy config to get BGP up. So let me show you that now. Uh, what we're gonna do in CSR3 is T router BGP. What you need to get BGP neighbors up is um, you gotta get the BGP process up. So that's what we're doing here with router BGP. You need a local AS, which is what we're gonna put in here, 65534, local autonomous system. Uh, you need a neighbor IP reachable via layer three. I need a TCP connection to the neighbor for this to work. So the neighbor here is the other end of this link, 10.20.40.2. I can't spell neighbor, so let's try that. Neighbor 10.20.40.2, and then remote AS dash. Um, so we're in this guy, CSR3, and the remote AS is this guy over here, 65535. Boom. That's all you need for BGP. We got to do it on the other side. You'll see that in a moment. Uh, one other command I'm going to put in here is redistribute connected. Um, because as you saw in our route table, the only routes that 
this uh, that are currently residing in the rib are the locally connected routes. I want BGP to take those connected routes, put them into BGP. So we're going to redistribute them into BGP so that they get advertised out. You could also do it with network statements. I much prefer redistribute connected. It's a lot cleaner and it uh, solves our problem here. So redistribute connected. All right. Same on the other side. We're going to get the uh, BGP process up. Router BGP 65535. All right. So we need a neighbor. That neighbor, from this guy's perspective, is over here 10.20.40.1. 10.20.40.1. Remote AS. Where does that neighbor live? Whoops, I messed up the address. So, boop. 10.20.40.1. Remote AS. From this guy's perspective, over here at CSR4, the remote AS would be 65534. All right, BGP is gonna come up. I'm gonna do a redistribute connected over here so that we get the locally connected routes uh, advertised out of BGP. Uh, there's our console message, the neighbor is up. That makes me happy. Um, so generally what I do, um, I don't know why, but I love show IP BGP summary. It's like a show IP interface brief to me. I just have to run it. I have to see it. it makes me happy. Um, so that just shows me that um, there's my um, 10.20.40.2 neighbor um, at AS 65535. The messages are going in and out. And there's my um, up and down time. So uh, another thing I would do is a show IP route uh, before we had, so we're in CSR3 now. All he knew about before was 10.20.30 and 10.20.40. He had no visibility to 10.20.50, which is what he needs. BGP, he learned it via BGP from CSR4, and now he knows about 10.20.50.0 via his next top of 10.20.40.2, which is here, and it's been up for 36 seconds. Pretty sweet. Um, trust but validate. Well, Chris Bryan shout out. So ping 10.20.50.40. All right. Uh, he didn't have a route to that end host before and he could not ping it. Now he can. Uh, we will verify this end as well. So the first thing I would do is show IP route. And what I'm looking for is that BGP learn route 10.20.30.0, which wasn't there before. Here it is. Uh, there's the code B. In your route table, he knows about it. There's his next hop. So we're in CSR4 now. So the way he reaches that is that next hop 10.20.48.1, which is here. That was also that remote AS, I'm sorry, that neighbor address. So everything is good and it's been up for a minute 19. Sweet. Um, also, uh, you would be able to ping end to end. So let's try that. Uh, let me find my guy here. So, um, in Eve, if you do a show IP, it'll show you the, um, I, I pre-configured this. I put the gateway of that next hop that the router he's connected to in that subnet. And uh, the address I put locally here on this PC is 10.20.30.40. You can see that. But what I want to try is to ping the far end, 10.20.50.40. And we're pinging. So we have now layer three connectivity uh, across the network, which is what we want. That is good. We're going to get rid of this. So why do we do all this and why is NetFlow so great? So if somebody tells me that source 10.20.50.40 cannot reach 10.20.30.40, well, what can I do? I can look in these routers. I can make sure I have a route to this. I can make sure I have a route to that. Source and destination look good. I can maybe try to ping those guys from here, but you're kind of limited. You can't actually prove and show that that traffic traversed your device. Uh, routing is good. It's a good first step, but uh, NetFlow. Mwah. So what we're going to do is configure NetFlow. How are we going to do that? I'm going to put it uh, on Giggy 1 in CSR3. I have a little cheat sheet over here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So your NetFlow config, first of all, this is iOS XE, older devices. If you have lab devices running, um, what's the old version of NetFlow? IP cache flow, I think they used to call it. Um, you can Google it. You can get the commands for, you know, your particular flat platform. If you have an 1800, 2800 in your home lab. Um, but this is an iOS XE uh, flow NetFlow config because we're working in CSRs. Um, so what I'm going to do here is in CSR3, uh, the first thing you got to do is create the flow monitor, they call it. Flow mon. Oh, I got to go into config mode. Silly goose. 
Is this getting long and boring already? I hope not. Um, just to save some time, I'll copy and paste it. Uh, flow monitor. So you have to name the flow monitor. I'm just naming it flow exporter one. And then um, you have to create this record. So that's there. And now you got to put it on an interface. So I'm going to go into int giggy one. And I am going to tell it, I not want no, I want yes. So now I'm going to say IP flow monitor. And then I'm going to call that flow exporter one that we created in the previous step and say input and output. So from Giggy One's perspective, it's going to take any traffic flowing into it and record a bunch of information like source IP, destination IP, and protocol. And anything that flows out of Giggy One, it's also going to record. So putting that on this interface. All right. Peachy Keen. Um, I'm going to check. So the way you would check NetFlow is with this command, show flow monitor, whatever you named it, and look in the cache. Now, I didn't want anything in here for purposes of demonstration, but because I sent a ping across in the previous step, we may see something here. Okay, good, we don't. It timed out. Um, there is a, uh, a cache, I don't know what the default is, but your entries will time out and disappear. Um, so in prod, uh, you can set this up, <clears throat> you can set up a flow exporter, which let me see if I still have that up. Yeah, so um, you can set up a flow exporter. So that could be like your NetFlow collector, some kind of Linux server where you're sending it out to a destination. You tell it what source and the transport is always UDP 9995. Um, so what would be nice is, you know, you would have that going out to some kind of tool that collects, you know, all this information. And then if somebody comes to you and says, hey, yesterday at 11 a.m. we had a problem. Um, it's not going to be in the cache of the router at times out. So you can go to that tool that's holding all that, um, you know, NetFlow collected data. And you can look in your tool and say, hey, did, did this traverse, you know, at that time and blah, blah, blah. So without further ado, um, what I want to do now is recreate the problem. The call comes in and says 10.20.50. No, hey, I got a problem. What's going on? Um, this client at source 10.20.50.40 cannot reach this application at 10.20.30.40. So this guy can't get to this guy. So what we're gonna do to prove whether that's working or not, uh, I'm gonna grab my show command here and pop it in CSR3 because this interface on CSR3 is configured to grab that information. And then in this guy, we are going to send a ping across so that will generate traffic. It's gonna send outbound traffic. Uh, there, there should be a ping and a pong. So the ping is gonna go out to the remote and then the remote is gonna respond back with the pong. And that's what we should see in NetFlow. You will see in a second. So ping 10.20.30.40. So as you can see, we just checked the uh, NetFlow cache and there was nothing in it. I'm going to generate traffic. Ping one, two, three, four, five. And then in my router, boop. All right, so let's expand this and take a look and see what we're looking at. So this is why I love NetFlow. So the call I get is 10.20.50.40 cannot reach 10.20.30.40. Well, I check routing, I ping around, yay. NetFlow will tell me quickly what's going on. So when I look at the first entry here, Try to truncate this so that you're only seeing the ping first. I don't want the pong, I just want the ping. We're gonna look here anyway. Try to ignore the bottom. Can't seem to make this go away. All right, so somebody calls and says, this guy can't reach this guy. All right, well, I'm looking at my NetFlow data. 10.20.50.40 was my source, that's this guy. So th this is a flow we're looking at now. This was traffic that traversed my router that went out this interface. And this is these are the details surrounding that flow. Again, flow is source, dash protocol, and all the other stuff you see in here. What this is proving is that this traffic traversed my router and left it, and the problem is not the transit network that you're calling about. So the flow that traversed my router came from the source, which the call said, you know, that was the source IP, the destination 10.20.30.40, that's there. Um, that is a high order, I think, random port assigned. Uh, IP protocol one is ICMP. So this source went to this destination on this port on this protocol. 
And what else is in here? Anything good? I'll give you next top. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. But this tells me that that guy reached that guy, went through this interface, and it was all recorded. The second entry should be the Pong. It should be the response from 103040 to 10, um, 5040. Massacre on the IPs here. But as you can see in the Pong, 10.20.30.40 over here went out to 10.20.50.40. It left this interface. Now, what, what I would do in production is I would have it on all these interfaces so that I could actually confirm, you know, from right to left, from source to desk, I want to make sure it got out the furthermost perimeter of the network that I manage. And then we would also put it over here so that I can validate that the Pong, you know, right now we're just saying that the Pong went through Giggy one um, but in the real world, you'd want to make sure it gets out the far end over here, but same concept. So let's pretend we're over here. Uh, 10.20.30.40, which is this guy responding back to 10.20.50.40 uh, on IP protocol one, SNMP, and it'll tell you what interface it went out of. Um, so this is why I love NetFlow. Um, if you're sitting managing a network and somebody calls you and they say something isn't working, I can go into my flow records, take a look and say, well, the routing is there. I can ping the source and dest from my aggregation layer. And um, my router is telling me that that flow of traffic, that source and destination came into my router, left that router and went on to its merry way. So let's go look at that part of the network and, and see what's going on over there. So that's why I love NetFlow. I can see traffic traversing my router. I can see it leaving. I can cover my bacon and say, well, it's got through the transit network. Let's go look on the far end and, and see what's going on out there. Um, I'm a big fan. If you're not using it, you should check it out, play around with it in your lab. Um, thank you for bearing with me on my first technical uh, video here. Hope they get a little tighter and um, you know a little better as we go, but um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.